A huge part of what makes the Gears of War games so special is its enemy roster, the backbone of its third person cover based gameplay. So I thought, let's make a tier list video ranking the enemies in Gears of War. This video is based on my thoughts and opinions, so you can't agree or disagree, that's totally fine. How I'm going to rank them will be based on a few things. What I think of their design, their purpose, their lore, what they offer to the gameplay experience itself, etc. So the factions included in this video will be split into three categories. The Locust Races, the Hollow Creatures, and the Lambent. Now this tier list will not include all of the Locust Drone and Race variations, because there are just so many, like the Beast Riders, the Miners, the Spotters, the Grenadier Elites, the Theron Sentinels, the Hunters, the Snipers, you get the picture. But I will include some notable variants, like the Armoured Cantus and the Maulers. And if you do want to see an updated version later down the line, for the Swarm etc, then I will create a video on that as well, once that enemy faction is properly fleshed out in upcoming games. So with all that clarified, I'm your host Stabs, and here is the ultimate Gears of War enemy tier list. Without further ado, let's get into this. We begin with the Locust Races, and therefore we gotta start with the bread and butter of the Locust Horde, the Drones. I love the Locust Drones, their unique design and especially their voice lines, so iconic. <laughs> They are the perfect match for the gear soldiers in combat, and are always seen with the hammer burst assault rifles. If this was a ranking just for the standard locust drone, I would probably just give it the S tier, but because there are so many locust drone variations, specialising in so many different forms of combat, that can change the gameplay experience, depending on which type of drone you encounter, that pushes them up to S plus tier. Whether you have to pop into cover because a locust sniper is present, or if you have to stay on your toes because a locust cyclops could use the cog's very own lancer chainsaw to cut you in half, or whether a locust gunner is manning a troika turret up ahead that can turn you into bits, or even if locust grapplers may grapple their way onto your assault derrick. The locust drones are the perfect standard enemy type that you could possibly have in Gears of War. Next we have the grenadiers, the big brothers to the drones you could say, I've always absolutely loved the Grenadier design, the perfect bodybuilding physique, stage ready for Mr Olympia, and even inspiring me to build a muscular physique. I love their aggressive nature, always pushing you with the Nasher, and I always enjoy picking up their frag grenades or Baltoc pistols whenever I slap them up. Man, the Grenadiers are so deadly on higher difficulties, with the way they push you, easily being able to gib you into smithereens. I love their design, their lore, and the way they make you rethink your gameplay decisions. And of course I enjoy getting into a melee slugfest with them. The Grenadiers are S tier in my opinion. I think if they added a few more notable Grenadier variations in the games, that would have bumped them up to an S plus for me. The last time I checked, the wind doesn't say hostiles. And so, we have the good old Theron guards, the elite of the Locust. Showing those drones and grenadiers how it's really done. They are the COGS equivalent to the Onyx Guard, except the Theron Guard actually get shit done. Field Commanders, Expert Marksmen, and Elite Commandos. The Therons are so badass. I love their character design, with the unique armour and helmets, their lore, and above all, their voices. Secured, unable, new mission, yeah. Even when fighting them, the talk bow is deadly and can easily blow you into bits. Their signature weapon fits them perfectly and I love using it once I kill them. Theron guards once again, S plus tier. Moving on to the deadly berserkers. The boss fight that scared many kids, including myself back in the day. I will never forget that epic berserker introduction scene and the horror elements the berserker brought to the original Gears of War game. The Berserkers are essential in the Gears of War lore as well, as part of the Locust Horde's reproduction methods. 
which we won't go into much detail in. They can run through you like a train. That's if they smell your exact whereabouts. The Berserker boss fights are some of the best enemy fights in the Gears of War games, and are one of the most iconic locust in the series. I'm going to put the Berserkers in S tier. The reason why they don't make it into S plus tier is because even though they're almost perfect as an enemy type, I think they could have done a little bit more with them. For instance, in Gears of War 2, they were never seen at all, even though you're in the hollow and then in the locust capital nexus. With no berserkers in the game that fleshes the locust out the most, that is a big oversight because in my opinion they deserved a little bit more involvement in the Gears of War lore. Then we have the forefathers of the locust drones, the sires. Their design is disgusting, grotesque and it fits their lore really well. They're creepy and in Gears 2 they bring back some of the horror elements that were present in the original Gears. In terms of gameplay, they're savage with their melee attacks, but they aren't sophisticated enough to take cover or do anything that's of any major significance, making them a little bit one dimensional. Chainsawing them is fun, but it wouldn't be fair to class them in the same category as some of the other locust races, due to how one dimensional and repetitive they are. So for that reason, I think the sires deserve a respectable place in the A tier. And then we move on to the religious officials of the Locust Horde, the Cantus Priests. The Cantus just epitomise everything to do with the Locust Horde, and then some. When you encounter them for the first time in Gears 2, you hear their battle chants, and you immediately know that these guys are field commanders and medics. The way they heal downed Locust drones, and seeing the drones light up as they're being healed, is such a cool concept forcing you to try and take the Cantus out ASAP. But the Cantus has skills of its own, tossing ink grenades into your vicinity to intoxicate you and flush you out of cover, as well as shooting with the Gorgon pistol. Their combat isn't as versatile as you think, neither is the troop variety of the Cantus, so I'll put them in the S tier. But I do want to include one Cantus variation, and that is the Armoured Cantus. He will be going into S plus tier without a doubt. Probably one of the most badass locust designs in the entire franchise and one of the coolest enemies without a doubt. The armoured Cantus does everything a normal Cantus does and more, hence why it gets into the S plus tier. Attacking with dual wielding gorgon pistols and rolling into a ball to deal damage to you thanks to its spiked bullet resistant armour. The only way you can kill them is by using explosive detonations on their mouth, the only part that isn't covered in armour, which they open when healing their downed allies. The Armoured Cantus is as badass of an enemy type as you can possibly get in a Gears of War game. Then we have the big boy boomers, known for their one word, straight to the point voice lines. <laughs> They're extremely dangerous bullet sponges who pack a punch with their boom shot grenade launchers. Heavy shock troops who are just bigger, fatter and dumber drones essentially, but they're iconic. I love the boomers, their lore, their armour and design is brilliant through the different boomer variations, but I do think that the AI could be a little bit better over the games. The way they miss boom shots, or when you're standing next to them, they take so long to react and then they just slap you, so that makes them miss the S plus tier for me. The boomers will go into the S tier, but one boomer variation I want to mention are the maulers, that I believe deserve the S plus tier. I personally love their design even more, with their iconic mauler helmet and boom shield. I really do enjoy fighting against them, as the maulers charge towards you with their explosive flail as they flush you out of cover and they immediately activate their boom shield as you shoot at them. The AI is much smarter and they are my favourite boomer variant, hence the special mention. Finally, for the locust races, we have the ragers. Severely underrated, and underutilised in my estimation. Their design when in their unraged state is nothing too amazing, and they can be killed easily. The breed shot rifle that they use is unique as well, but here they are just a different locust drone breed. But when enraged, they act and look absolutely insane. This gives them the S plus tier for me as they charge towards you, allowing your best bets to be either to headshot or fight them with explosives. The Ragers when enraged look and act the part, 
so they're definitely S plus tier. Now let's move on to the hollow creatures and rank them accordingly. Firstly we have the large, bulky, cavalry creatures known as the blood mounts who I absolutely adore. They are the perfect locust version of a horse where riders would use going into battle. I love their unique physiology and design, how savage they are and the double fight you have of dealing with the blood mount and the rider. Even the law behind them is brutal which fits the locust perfectly. They are without a doubt S plus tier. They are one of my favourite hollow creatures, if not my favourite. Everything about them is perfect. The Tyrannosaurus Rex of the Gears of War universe. The Gargantuan Brumac. A walking tank. A walking catastrophe. Armed to the teeth with an arsenal of weapons to cause devastation to gears, vehicles, civilians and infrastructure. They fit their role perfectly for the Locust Horde and on higher difficulties they are so difficult to take on. Even when you play as a Brumac in Gears of War 2, you see the devastation that they can cause and honestly it's so much fun. Their design is unique and fitting for the Gears universe and the Locust. Their lore is interesting since according to COG research it is indicated that the Brumacs were bred from apes by the Locust. And in terms of gameplay they can be a pain and rightly so. The Brumacs go into the S tier. Then we have the corpses, the immense spider-like hollow creatures used by the locust to dig tunnels all across Sera. The corpses are vital because they are the missing piece which makes the locust attacks so unpredictable. Without them, how does Emergence Day even happen? If it was just a ranking of law, I would give them S plus tier, but there's other things to account for. In terms of the corpse boss fights, I've never found them to be very interesting, a bit boring and not very dynamic. They're just quite simple and straightforward really. As an enemy type, they're a bit one dimensional, so that drags them down to A tier for me. But bear in mind, A tier is still really good of course, just not as good as some of the other enemy types. Next we have the monkey dogs, as Ben Carmine would say. The good old wretches, the cannon fodder for the locust horde. Their design is cool, they fit their role well, but at the end of the day they're cannon fodder and they're an afterthought compared to the other enemy types so I'm going to put them into the B tier. Also I think they could have done a lot more with the wretches, especially with the master boomer cut concept, the boomer that travelled with wretches or even different wretch species. Then we have the tickers, the poor little guys who are strapped with emulsion explosives beyond their will, seen to blow up cog vehicles and they'll blow you into smithereens if you're not careful. Their design is cool as well, for the role that they fulfil. I honestly like the tickers, they've served their role well and on high difficulties they always catch me off guard, pushing me out of cover, where I'd always have to think twice, do I punch them, roll away or shoot them while they're next to their fellow tickers, to take multiple tickers out or even multiple locusts out at once. Tickers are a good respectable enemy type, so I'll put them in the A tier. I really like them, but of course they're not as loved as the other enemy types in the higher tiers. The good old flying horsey according to the Coltrane, the large flying hollow creature known as the Reaver, one of the coolest locust enemies in the Gears games, used to suppress the cog's air support and to dominate the gears on the ground. I love fighting the Reavers, sniping the gunner and pilot off the mounts and even riding the Reavers in the Gears 2 campaign. It's awesome how the locust use these creatures to travel and to provide air support. I can't think of anything that I'd improve for the Reavers, so for that reason they're S plus tier. The Shriekers, small creatures that floated mid-air, equipped with modified Gorgon SMGs. They kinda remind me of the drones from Halo with their game design and how they swarm in numbers. Their design is good, but overall they're quite a forgettable enemy type. It would have been better if they appeared in Gears 1 and 2 as well, for more enemy diversity since they're pretty much cannon fodder. I'll give them the B tier, they're okay but like I said quite forgettable. One of the most monstrous and deadly hollow creatures, the Hydra, created by Ukon through his mutations of the Reavers. Only used as a personal mount for locust leadership and used as a gunship, the Hydra in both Gears 2 and Gears Tactics looked insane with two different designs. The Hydra in Gears 2 is so tough to deal with on higher difficulties, but man I love it. The Hydra chase level just epitomises the scary gargantuan enemy. 
Coming up against this creature and Scourge on the way to Jacinto is just perfect. S plus tier for sure. The floating assault airships, the gas barges from Gears of War 3. I love the lore behind these blimp like creatures. The way the locusts used them to fight against the cog and the lambent after the flooding of the hollows. And I like how the locusts deploy onto the battlefield from them and how the barge can hold a huge crew of locusts. It's not the best enemy type out there, they're slow and sluggish, but they serve a good purpose in my estimation, and therefore I think the A tier is a good fit for the gas barges. Then we have another barge, but this time it's the torture barge. We don't exactly fight this creature, so I'm looking at the torture barge in terms of a lore and story aspect. Man the locusts are so crazy, they literally keep prisoners in a mobile prison, as they transport them to become brutally processed. This was another method of travel for the locust in the hollow, as the beast barge would climb atop the ceilings in the hollow, and over emulsion lakes, etc. Their insectoid mix of beast and machinery design is great, and they fulfilled their role well of showcasing the brutality of the locust's methods of torturing prisoners of war, like Tai Kaliso. So, I'll put the torture barge in the A tier. The Krill. One of the biggest reasons why the original Gears of War game felt like a horror game at times. Because you knew that one step into the darkness and you would become pulverised into a pile of blood and gore by these carnivorous creatures. The Krillstorm is so important in Gears lore since that was a huge reason as to how they were able to wipe out human cities in the Locust War. As well as the Krill making General Ram look even more badass than he is. Even playing as Ram in the Ram's Shadow DLC, using the Krill to decimate Gears is so satisfying. They're such a great unique concept and I absolutely love them. The Krill are goated, so it's gotta be S plus tier. Then we have the aquatic hollow creatures, known as the Manglers. Basically, used to power the locusts gunboats over lakes underground. I think the gunboats are really cool and underrated. The way the locust even used aquatic creatures for transport purposes. But the mangler fish themselves are nothing too special, so that puts me in two minds. Ultimately, I think B tier is a fair assessment for the manglers. The Nemesis and the Cedars. I'm going to group these two together since they pretty much go hand in hand. They're important in terms of lore, as the Cedars shoot Nemesis into the sky in order to ink it and prepare it for a krill storm. But overall, I'm not too fond of the Cedars, as they're boring, and I hate how the jamming of radio comms, thanks to the Cedars, is always used as a mini plot device, especially in the first Gears of War game, because you can't move on to the next part of the story without first prioritising contact with Control. It's the Cedars, they're jamming our transmissions. Then we have to make those Cedars our top priority, sir. Agreed. We need to re-establish radio contact with Control ASAP. Okay, the only way we can catch that train is with Anya's help, so re-establishing Comlink is our top priority. Let's find that cedar. Their design is cool as all hollow creatures pretty much are, but I find the cedars to be very annoying. I think we'll put them in the C tier. I get why they exist, but yeah, I don't really like them. The Leviathan, the apex predator of the waters in the hollow. I love the build up to fighting them in Gears 2 when you see the locusts stop chasing you because they know those waters aren't safe, as well as the fact that the leviathan kills the smaller mangler fish on the gunboats. The fight against the leviathan isn't bad, nothing amazing and quite scripted. At the end of the day, the leviathan is a creature seen in many games and works of fiction so it's nothing unique, so for that reason the leviathan doesn't get any higher than the B tier. I have a little soft spot for this next enemy, the Rockworm. Do we even class it as an enemy, just an indigenous cave creature that feeds on plants? I love how Gears of War 2 used them as a mobile cover as you fought the locust in the hollow. Their tough stone-like hides made them very useful to take cover behind, and it's so interesting how the Rockworms were the main food source for the locust horde. I'll go with A tier because if it was any higher, it would be a bit unfair to the other enemies in the upper ranks. A hollow creature that appeared in Gears 3 was the Siege Beast, enslaved by the Locust Horde in order to be used as a catapult-like machine, effectively and accurately destroying targets, causing devastating amounts of damage. Honestly, they're quite forgettable, but it's a badass design and use for the Locust Horde. 
I think the Siege Beasts deserve a fair place in the B tier. Moving on to the Giant Serapedes, centipede-like creatures of Sera that were corrupted by the Locust Horde. They would shoot lightning from their pincers, but to defeat it, you would have to outmaneuver the Serapede and shoot its tail. Usually, it may take two or more of you to get this job done. Overall, they're a cool enemy. They change the dynamic a little bit, so I don't mind coming up against them, but they're nothing too special. So the B tier will do for the Serapedes. Next, we have the iconic Riftworm from Gears of War 2. Who even thinks of an idea to have a gargantuan Riftworm deployed to sink cities by burrowing through the planet's crust? It's such a crazy concept, and its execution was perfect. The Riftworm is amazing, and the Riftworm level and its level design is one of the best ever in the Gears of War series. Having to kill it from the inside and chainsaw your way through multiple hearts is just the best. I love the Riftworm and everything about it. S plus tier. Finally for the hollow creatures, we'll just touch upon those stupid creatures that killed our boy Ben Carmine. We are talking about the Nemesites. Creatures that lived within the Riftworm itself, used as a secondary device to destroy living organisms in the Riftworm's stomach area, but they're just cannon fodder and they're like wild tickers, but worse, and they were rarely ever encountered, so be a tier for the Nemesites. Moving on to the Deadly Lambent Faction, so let's rank their enemy variations accordingly. The base, cannon fodder Lambent enemies are the polyps, crab-like creatures, swarming in numbers as they'd spit emulsion over floors, walls, and so on. The polyps are not really great from a gameplay perspective. They're cannon fodder after all, but they don't have the personality that the wretches have, who are the cannon fodder for the locust side of things. They feel a lot more soulless compared to the wretches, so they have to be ranked lower than them for sure. It will have to be C tier for the polyps. The Lambent Drone. Locust drones infected with lambency, who have such an awesome, iconic design. They act the same as normal locust drones, except when you kill them, they will explode. I think the Lambent Drones deserve a good solid spot on the S tier. However, the Lambent Drudge deserves the S plus tier, because the Drudges are drones who've had a more prolonged exposure to emulsion. For me, they are the face of the Lambent, showcasing how grotesque and fierce the mutagens can be. They're diverse and dynamic, with the different mutations they can form into, which all change the gameplay experience. I also love how when you chainsaw or retrocharge them, they can still mutate into something far worse. The drudges epitomise everything about the Lambent. Everything about them is just right, so I love them. The Formers. Lambent humans, who act like zombies in the Gears universe. Except they're so fast, agile, they jump very high, and they swarm in large numbers. They're not much of a threat though overall, and die easily. But they're a cool enemy, and showcase the results of humans being infected with lambency, which is something the previous games always alluded to prior to Gears of War 3. So it was great to finally see a lambent version of the humans. So I'll put the formers in the A tier. Then, we have the lambent variations of the Locust Butcher Boomers. We have the Gunker. Heavy shock troops who lob balls of emulsion at you, causing devastating amounts of damage. As well, as attacking close by enemies with their cleaver mutated arm, which actually has a very long range. The Gunkers are a good enemy type, a nice change of pace. They're slow and sluggish, but they're deadly. However, I was quite disappointed that the Gunker is the only Lambent Boomer variant ever seen in Gears 3, or ever seen in any Gears of War game or media so far. Man, they could have done so much more with Lambent Boomer variations. Like how would a Lambent Mauler look, or a Lambent Flame Boomer? Imagine that. So, I think with the Gunker, they didn't really capitalise on what was possible. The Gunkers deserve a spot in the B tier. The Lambent Wretches. They are barely any different to the standard Wretches, so they may as well just be in the same tier, right? So let's put them into tier B, along with their Locust counterparts. Now then, the Gargantuan, disgusting formation of a Brumac, horribly turning Lambent. The Lambent Brumac was instrumental in Gears Law, but the flooding of the Hollows, and the plot, as Marcus and Tom boarded a Brumac, to clear the path in the Hollow, ready for the Light Mass Bomb. Which, the Brumac destroyed anyway, but as a boss fight itself, it wasn't really great. You couldn't do anything except stand there in the Raven, and use the Hammer of Dawn, and just hope for the best. 
but I do love the concept behind them, their design, and the purpose behind their use in the story. Tier B is probably fair though. The Lambent Leviathans are pretty much the same as the normal Leviathans really, just a bit deadlier, Lambent infested, and the boss fight is better than the original Leviathan one, since this time, you're in a silverback, and there's other Lambent forces to take care of as well, so there's a bit more going on, but with the Lambent Leviathans, there's no major significant change with them, to warrant a better placement than the normal Leviathans. So B tier, just like their non-infected brethren. Finally, we have the Lambent Berserkers. They're Berserkers who have just been dialed up to 100. Throw everything out there, make them almost indestructible, give them the ability to jump, and land powerful ground blows. Make them more agile, and leave walls of emulsion behind them. I don't know if I'll be in the minority for this one, but I actually prefer to fight against the Lambent Berserkers over the Locust ones. Not to mention their design is insane as well. I love everything about them and their indestructible nature. So finally, they'll be going into the S plus tier, whether you like it or not. And so my friends, that concludes the ultimate Gears of War enemy tier list in my most humble of opinions. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I want to hear everything of what you may have to say. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and a special thank you to the channel members for your extra support. I really do appreciate it. I'm your host Abs, and as always, I will catch you guys next time.